Hi everyone, uh, we'll be shortly beginning uh, our second webinar uh, of the series. Sam here. Uh, Gersadak, I think you're on, uh, you're not on mute, sir, so your conversation sounds fascinating, um, but you might want to go on mute. Thank you, Sam. All right, let's begin. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Little Book of Green Nash's hey, webinar session. Because, mute, yeah. If you don't mind muting yourself, that'd be great. Derek, is it possible? Yeah, I'm um, mute. Yeah, I'm looking for. <laughs> Great. So, hello everyone, and welcome again to the Little Book of Green Ashes webinar session. Um, my name is Marina Shimura, and I work for UNEP, and I'm joined by Dori, my colleague here, to facilitate this webinar. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to share a few housekeeping updates. Uh, the session will be recorded and will be uh, made available on our YouTube site. Uh, YouTube page will be shared with you later. Um, you're currently muted, uh, but please feel free to ask uh, any questions in the chat box or or just by raising hands. And um, after the presentation, uh, you're you're more than welcome to uh, share your experience from your campuses too. Um, today's webinar will begin with a speaker from UNEP, Mr. Garrett Clark, uh, followed by Sam Barrett from UNEP joining Eric Levine from Leaders Quest. Uh, then we will have the representatives uh, from two universities, uh, Dr. Kawal Gill from um, S SGG SCC, University of Delhi in India, and Dr. Joseph Muga Muare from Karatina University in Kenya. Um, we will then have a Q&A session and open discussion among all participants. Uh, we're inviting anyone who would like to share their experience in the future webinars, uh, so please um, reach out to us. Um, so let us begin our second webinar of the series. Uh, welcome to the pilot campuses and those who are simply interested in this concept. Um, and of course, thank you so much for being here today. Um, as you may know, this all started with the Little Book of Green Nudges that we published a little over a year ago um, in partnership with the Behavioral Ch uh, Insights uh, team and Grid r and uh, Today we have uh, over 130 universities using Green Nudges on campus um, as part of this project. Um, Campuses are like a family and it's also like a community community and today's young people will soon be the leaders in such communities and in our society running the economy too. So there is no better time than now to engage young people from uh, everyone from students to teachers um, to staff members in decision making and actions while offering full support through enabling the best conditions to harness those actions. In the book, um, we featured some nudge examples such as campus-wide campaigns and, and competitions. The fun thing about it is that you can be as creative as you want to be. With that, I would like to introduce you to Ms. Garrett Clark from UNEP, leading sustainable lifestyles and education team based in Paris. With a sustainability car career spanning over 30 years, her expertise lies in um, promoting how we all can live better and lighter. Um, she's going to show us how to promote better living through rethink, rethinking daily choices. 
she doesn't look like that, but she's actually um, over 55. And at 55, she took us distance run running. And now, guys, blind runners in half marathons. Um, how cool is that? Uh, showing that as in life, uh, the race goes to those who show up, offer help and don't give up. And it's true, um, you know, I, I myself had a, a, a pleasure of running with her uh, at midnight in the Arctic under the sun. Um, Garrett, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mari. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. OK, perfect. Um, so it's a real pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for that um, introduction. Mari and uh, Dorothea, and it's really a pleasure to be here with the group today and the distinguished speakers I look forward to hearing. Um, as Mari mentioned, I'm the Sustainable Lifestyles yeah. Program Officer, and I'm in Paris. And in the brief time that I have, I'm going to outline some of the emerging science around what is a people lens to sustainable development or sustainability, and then highlight one of the initiatives that we're working on that nudges people in the right direction. Now, one of the things I need to note is this term nudge, given the problem that we have on the planet with the crises that we're all hearing about on a daily basis, it's not about nudging everybody in sort of as many dif different directions as possible. It's about nudging in the key directions we need to around what the evidence and science are saying, what we can do to make um, the people and planet a better place. So I want to take a step back and, and mention a bit more about the evidence, because when we think about sustainable development, traditional education or understanding about it has been focused on resource flows, whether it's energy, water, the resources themselves, big sectors like manufacturing. But when we look at how people actually engage in their daily decisions, people don't wake up and think about resource flows. They don't actually think up and wake up and think about the environment at all. They don't think about it in a bad way, but not in a good way either. It tend to make they live around how they spend their lives and what the decisions they have about what they do. And this slide is one of the uh, it summarizes the emerging evidence that shows if you apply a people lens or a household lens to what are environmental impacts, we see that households account for two thirds of greenhouse gases. And this is similarly impressive around biodiversity and other waste issues. And looking at the selection of countries here, which don't represent all of the most consuming countries, we realize that whether you're looking at the 2030 targets or the 2050 targets, that how we live has to, how we live has to change. And what does that mean? The decisions we make daily around what we call here, nutrition, housing, mobility, consumer goods, leisure, that's what the evidence is telling us. But the evidence can be a bit overwhelming and not so accessible. So how do we make it easier for people to consume, to make it motivating? Well, let's look at how people think, how they make decisions. And this slide here, though it looks simple, is the result of two years of experts coming together behavior scientists, sustainability experts, ge gender as well as regional experts coming in and looking at how people make decisions with a lens to sustainability. And we know that there is not one sustainable lifestyle. How you live sustainably in one place versus another varies uh, drastically. And it can be uh, vary based on social norms or the physical environment. And the, that we know that income is not aligned with happiness above a certain sort of basic needs level. And that the aspirations that we have, the most rich and the most poor, we're finding increasing similarities because the aspirations of the most consuming are affecting everyone. One of the things we found out, which those of us in the sustainability field find you know, frustrating, is that knowledge does not necessarily translate into action. And that we know that people don't necessarily make decisions based on sustainability, but more around price, availability, status, whether it's cool, whether the neighbors are doing it. And even those of us who many on the on the webinar today may be like that, who want to live more sustainably, may not have affordable, accessible or attractive options across their living uh, different domains. And critical, as Mari mentioned, is that when we look at how to make change, with two to three billion new consumers coming online, many of them are urban youth. 
who are setting today's consumption patterns around food, phone, and fashion, they're going to be tomorrow's leaders and get 90% of their information from social media. So thinking about that context on who we're working with and how to reach them, UNEP has been working with experts across a number of different areas, which include technical experts, political experts, again, um, marketing and communication experts, and we translated the evidence on how we live in our households into five key areas about how we can live better. It's around food, stuff, money, fun, and move. And if you think about it, that's a lot more digestible than the, than the graph earlier showed you, because in order to get the information out there, it has to be accessible, understandable, and something that makes sense. So we put it together in a social media toolkit, which again, would be working on social media via Instagram, and we're also working on LinkedIn, which highlights the simple actions that people can do and then engages individuals, we say young, but it's young at heart as well, to post on how they're already living more sustainably. Now, I highlight the key areas here only to um, go into a bit more depth around, as I mentioned, nudging is important, but all in the same direction. If we look around, for example, on, on food, it's important about how we're looking at protein swaps, whether we use all of our food. We found that 17% that of food in households in all urban environments globally is wasted. How can we improve that? And growing our own. These are priority actions and again the, the science behind it, but it's presented in a engaging, challenging, and literally a challenging way. Um, UNEP hosts with other youth groups, with in, in institutions that are working with youth on how they can post under the anatomy of action as well as the other partnering hashtags what it is that people are doing today to live more sustainably. One of the challenges we have is that when you think about sustainable living, because it varies so much and because aspirations are informed by $700 billion worth of pro-consumption media, advertising and marketing, a real desirable motivating vision of what does sustainable living mean is not out there yet. And the anatomy of action contributes to making a visual mosaic of how living sustainably go globally can happen. So a recent activation that we carried out with um, partners, because we work around the world, reached over 4 million, which bringing us to a total of 5.5 million in over 50 countries, and we're looking at engaging more. Now, that was a quick presentation, but we'd be delighted to share any of the evidence, the science, and the thinking, and I appreciate your time and look forward to hearing the other speakers. Thank you, Gary, for this um, evidence-based uh, lifestyles, uh, sustainable lifestyles framework. And um, a fun and easy initiative to engage individuals and make impacts through um, a small change in, in our daily lives. And if I understand uh, correctly, your team also made a, uh, made a COVID sensitive as well. So this might be, uh, really be an um, a easy, a low hanging fruit for institutions to connect students and, and staff members. And um, just to say that this, you know, there, there are so many ways to engage um, um, young people and institutions and people around the world. Um, and, and then one is not enough. And as many tools there are out there, um, I think uh, the more choices that we have to actually, uh, you know, take actions. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really, really uh, pleased to, to present another tool that we have here. Um, people all over the world are taking practical steps to protect uh, what they what they love from climate change before it's too late. And you know, we we all all have to enjoy protecting where we live. And a counter his mission is to inspire 1 billion citizens to significantly reduce their carbon pollution and challenge leaders uh, to, to deliver bold and global change. Please welcome Mr. Eric uh, Levine. He's the core partner of this global movement, and he spent two decades working on global youth mobilization and more recently working with senior business leaders on how businesses can contribute to making the world more sustainable and equitable. Um, 
And joining him is Mr. Sam Barrett from UNEP, Chief of the Youth and Ed Youth Education and Advocacy Unit uh, based in Nairobi. And he oversees the work of UNEP's um, uh, Youth and Education Alliance with the networks representing over 2,700 universities from around the world. Um, he also manages the non-formal education programs such as uh, working with gaming industries, sports uh, industries and youth organizations. Eric, Sam, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Great, thanks everyone. Thanks, Mari, and thanks, Claire. Really good to see the Nasri in action. So, just I just want to provide a ramp for Eric just to showcase Counter Sin. So, the idea we had for this initiative is moving individuals' behaviours and finding a way to try and aggregate those to showcase how collectively people are coming together to change behaviours. There isn't a place that you can go and really see what others are doing to make a difference. And what we wanted to try and support camps in with, with is like, what are the individual actions that will make the greatest difference to, in, to reduce your own individual carbon footprint, but also offer a range of options. So it was kind of context agile and geographically agile as well. So um, I think for us, the council initiative is, is an exciting way of offering it to the private sector to get whole companies to make a difference, uh, to work with sports to see how they can make a difference, and to give people a very practical, pragmatic tool to take it on. So we've been working with the European Union um, who want to try and make Countersin a key offer across Europe, um, and also with some other partners in sports, sound, such as UEFA, uh, Formula E and others to try and make this something for everybody to think about how they can make a contribution so citizen commitments can be measured. And I think with Anatomy of Action and Countersin, they're both great tools that can make a difference. I think the Anatomy of Action, I think, is is, is brilliant. I really think it's smart. Uh, and then Countersin, I think, is another tool that we put together so you can make different choices depending on whether it's just a, a social campaign, um, which is about informing people about choices, uh, or another campaign which might be what you want to embed into a wider community. So. Um, Eric, I'm going to hand the floor over to you uh, just to introduce Ken soon. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Mari. And Garrett, that was uh, a brilliant um, kind of tee up. And the, um, I guess the the <clears throat> what I'm going to go through is is trying to build on that 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 um, that engaging people and inviting them uh, to take action in a way that is relevant for them, uh, you know, kind of how do we do that? And as Sam said, um, you know, see that all done collectively. Um, can everybody see my screen? Is that, is that all right? Yes, yeah. yes you can. Yep, yes. great, okay. So, so Mar Mari said, uh, count us in, ambitious uh, 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 an, a collective initiative that UNEP and my organization, Leaders Quest, and TED, it's a, it's a radical, what we call a radical collaboration of organizations who have come together um, around this mission. Um, I wanted to um, just talk to you really briefly about um, what what uh, what Mari said in the introduction, is all of the, uh, I guess, the, the research, uh, you know, and the insight, part, you know, part of what Garrett was saying earlier, obviously, the, all the research we've drawn on the testing is, um, not only is everyone's circumstances different and what they can do to change in their life, but the motivation of why they would take action is different. And so part of Countessin's, I, I guess, core underlying hypothesis and thesis is that you have to go and meet people where they care, what they care about, what they're passionate about. So this notion of we all can protect what we love, even if that is different. So if Sam or Mari and I, you know, have uh, you know, have different, you know, I might be, uh, you know, a, a super nature enthusiast and Sam might love uh, football and, uh, you know, and, and Mari obviously loves the Arctic, uh, sort of running in the Arctic and and each of those is are, are wonderful, mo you know, kind of motivating factors for why we would take action. And what we're trying to do is tap into that and the communities that already exist around um, uh, those passions and help those communities and individuals move to action. So that, that's where Count Us In starts. Um, okay. There's a, if I was to build out a couple of the, I guess the underlying themes is protect what you love. I'm going to talk in a sec about what Sam was mentioning, the kind of taxonomy and Garrett mentioned as well. Um, how do you invite people to make changes that matter? And this is also something that, that we've seen in all the testing and research is people, given the scale of the planetary challenges that we're facing, people need to know that what they're being invited to do the actions that are taking actually make a difference. And part of that is about what action you're taking and can you see the impact of that? And part of what Countessin does is 
anytime somebody makes a pledge or takes an action, it says, hey, here's the, here's the, the, the carbon impact of that or here's the influence impact of that. But a big part of knowing that it matters is what Sam was talking about, doing it together. And the way that we talk about that is adding up to something bigger. So, so even if I, sitting in my you know, house in London with, you know, with, with my family, can take actions and maybe I can understand what's happening in my neighborhood, what Countison is trying to provide is a way that, that, that I can see everybody in my community that's taking action, maybe you know, in my workforce or my football team, I'm a Tottenham. Hotspur fan, they're an active member of the campaign, and also that we can we can in the background add up through our aggregator all of the actions that are happening around the world. So that that key bit, I think there's something really powerful that uh, in that across all of the university networks, as you you know universities and and uh, you know kind of students, you know alumni, faculty. There's really powerful networks to tap into. So really quickly, I just want to tell you the the building blocks of Count Us In. So as Sam mentioned. We have an initial starting point of if you want to know what you can do, here's 16 steps that you can take. And, 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 and Sam and colleagues at UNEP and others helped us through the process of what would make an impact, what would have an influence, and how do we have a range of things that, um, that are suitable for everyone. Um, if you go on the Count Us In website or uh, platform, you can see there's a whole range. It's, there's behavioral stuff around your diet and your transport, your energy and things like that. And there's also ways of using your voice. Um, I should just say they're not a fixed list. We're, we're we're in the process of evolving, as Sam said, to to make uh, action sets that are relevant for different parts of the world and different people. We would, when I come to the end, we're, we would love to uh, to know you know kind of which universities and networks would be interested in 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 helping us shape uh, a specific offering for universities and what actions would be most appropriate for them as we build out later in the year. Um, all of those actions are represented on uh, on on technology platforms we have on the on the left side you can see a global website and an action platform anybody can go there take a take a pledge and an action get some support to see that through but as sam said one of the things we're trying to do is meet people where they're at so so the thing on the right is is in essence it's a white label version of the action platform that is designed for people who love motor racing and we have a partnership with Extreme E, which some of you have caught and broadcast to 140 million people. Sam mentioned another with UEFA. Um, and the underpinnings of you can still take action and it all adds up. But but if you love Lewis Hamilton and he owns a team in Extreme E, you can come in through the door of motor racing and you can get involved and take action with a community that works for you. Um, we think there's, again, real opportunity to leverage the unique relationship that universities have with all of their stakeholders, um, and to and to build out you know platforms and communities that are specific to, to you know to university communities, and really work at deepening the relationships that universities have with their students and faculty and alumni. Um, we're very early stages, um, so you know we, we do just you know about six and a half seven months in, everything is is picking up. We've had uh, close to 175,000 people who have taken a step. You know, lots of different, uh, you know, kind of actions, and 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 starting to see, uh, you know, the the kind of carbon savings as well as the voice steps that are adding up. That's the aggregator that sits in the background of all that we do, and important that people can see. Uh, as Sam mentioned, we're the official citizen action arm of the, the European Climate Pact and, um, you know, the, connected with Countdown, the Earthshot Prize and lots of other initiatives in sport and culture um, that people who are interested and really happy to kind of share more, more about. There's a range of about 90 or so partners from big businesses to cities and, um, you know, uh, civil society organizations, museums uh, uh, who are involved in, um, in, in, in Count Us In and activating in different ways. There's a range of wonderful um, what we call stubborn optimists that Christiana Figueres, um, our chief stubborn optimist, coordinates for us. Uh, just the, each one is activating in different ways. Uh, just to highlight Sasha Dench, uh, who you see up there with a helmet uh, in the top row. We're doing an activation with her trying to set the Guinness World Record in June for the most number of personal climate actions taken in a month. Uh, and she's going to be flying a paramotor around the UK to try to, to mobilize people to action all over the world. So it's those kinds of things we're, we're doing with our stubborn optimists. We have a whole network of what we call hubs. So community organizations that are doing the, the wonderful work of, of, of uh, engaging uh, on, on climate action in, in their communities all over the world. and really welcoming um, additional partnerships in that in, in that area. Um, 
and and I guess the the public side, as Sam mentioned, the kind of backbone of of different you know football uh, themed campaigns and you know music concerts and the Guinness World Record and different um, kind of elements where we're trying to work with partners to uh, to 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 reach people through relationships they have. Always inviting people to take action in a way that can be counted so that people can add up and see it together. And the last bit I just say is in terms of people wanting to get involved in this, as I said, we have a, a number of, uh, of um, uh, uh, university partnerships that are starting to evolve. We see so much opportunity in helping uh, universities connect the really powerful relationships that they have and, and how universities are part of the identities of the students and alumni and, you know, faculty um, you know that, that they're part of and so we're really keen on building something that's specific for universities we've been talking about with Sam um, so that's something we'd like to do over over the, the course of the rest of this year and and, and launch in into the to, to this decade-long campaign so lots of different ways to get involved and I'll stop there I'm hoping that did my six minutes um, and Mari can I hand that back to you thank you Eric so much I I, I wish that we had like six hours instead of six minutes. Um, I'm so glad that <laughs> the participants today got to hear both similar yet different tools to mobilize young people to take actions and rethink the way we uh, we run our lives and eventually build our future. Uh, what's great about these tools are that both of them are tapping into people's aspiration and uh, to shift our behavior. Why not enjoy doing what we love uh, while protecting uh, our ecosystem, ecosystems, right? So can we count all of you in? Now, uh, let's hear from our universities and, and their green nudges work. Uh, Dr. Kawal Gill, um, uh, she's an associate professor at Department of Commerce, um, SGG, um, SCC, uh, SCC, University of Delhi and in India. Um, with wide research experience, her current research is on circular economy and financial in inclusion. Kawal, the floor is yours. Can you mute, unmute yourself, please? Come on, we're, we're having a bit of um, audio yeah, yeah. problem. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for a very brief uh, introduction, as I was told to uh, submit it to you. And uh, I am very happy and I feel uh, a lot of pride uh, that out of uh, 130 institutions, those who are listed on your website, uh, those who are committed on the Green Nudges, uh, you know, the project, uh, we have been invited to make a presentation uh, to the, to this community, uh, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, and uh, before actually I uh, really uh, make my presentation, I just want to make a very brief comment. Uh, this uh, brief comment, uh, what I feel is that you know the entire debate about green nudges is you know how we change our consumption patterns okay so this ongoing pandemic has taught us that we can not only survive uh, rather we can uh, live reasonably well you know uh, with uh, a, a very limited resources and i think uh, this uh, one year and one and a half years and i don't know how many more months to go on with this pandemic I think we are learning a great lesson and uh, it, it is going to be a re real challenge for all of us that whether we'll be able to, uh, you know, carry it forward, whether we'll be able to sustain our lifestyle with what we have now, uh, when the pandemic is over, when, you know, the life gets normal, or that is going to be a real challenge for all of us. So I think the idea is to change the consumption patterns and uh, uh, so that, you know, we can uh, see uh, some good results for uh, you know, the present uh, generation as, as well as the future generation, we can preserve, we can go with sustainable future and so on and so forth like that. So I, uh, without uh, making uh, much of uh, it that, you know, I want to make my presentation. Uh, yes. So, uh, this is the first slide. Uh, I think uh, my previous speakers, uh, they have been telling us all about, you know, how we can go with sustainability options. Uh, 
uh, on a very wider scale. But uh, I think uh, I believe that uh, if we have to bring some change, uh, that change has to come uh, from the very grassroots level, and that is from the very very micro unit. So uh, we, uh, when we thought of it, then uh, we obviously we heard about it, and then we are committed to this green this concept. And uh, then just I, I'll just uh, take one minute to introduce uh, our college is a premier institution in University of Delhi. It was founded in 1984, and uh, we have a sprawling, lush green, ten-acre campus with environment-friendly, state-of-the-art infrastructure. Uh, we do have a hybrid system of wind and solar panels for electricity generation. There is a rainwater harvesting in the campus, and uh, the uh, campus is committed to segregation and management of e-waste on the campus uh, by installing e-waste collection. Now, I feel that e-waste collection is very important, and this is done in collaboration with an e-waste recyclers in India. This is the, again a very big company in India. Then we also have uh, the solar panel heaters along with the water harvesting unit to optimize the use of alternative energy sources. So I, I'm just taking you uh, to a brief, uh, uh, you know, the pictures. So this is uh, the campus. You can see how green it is. And uh, this is on one of the occasions uh, we uh, planted some 550 saplings. And, uh, you know, uh, you see this. Uh, this is a solar panel and this is a rooftop where, you know, the solar panels are installed. This is the e-base collection bin uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, you know, uh, if, if whenever we are taking an initiative, I think it is really challenging that we really have to engage people and seek the support. Uh, I mean, we have to engage people, our students, and we have to seek the support from our seniors. So basically, we came up with a functional plan. Uh, as you can see, uh, we created uh, the team and then we did a pilot survey about the existing behavior. Uh, then uh, now we are at the third stage that we're doing an online awareness campaign, uh, then series of webinars, online competitions, introduction of nudges and measuring the change in behavior. Now, all these are a part of the plan. So as of now, what we have done, uh, we created a core team in January 2021. Uh, and this core team comprises of four faculty members, uh, including myself. And uh, then uh, we made a core team of students. Uh, now, I, I just want to tell you that there are uh, 40 student societies out of which we picked up four. And, uh, you know, the core, uh, the office bearers of those societies were, uh, you know, uh, the member of the core team. Uh, then, uh, obviously, we have extended our team, uh, the student team. And uh, at present, we have about uh, 60 students, uh, I mean, and teachers those who are committed uh, to carry forward the green nudges uh, uh, you know the project so there are basically four teams uh, and these four teams as you can see that the, the uh, you know the four teams are divided on uh, the four nudges so what we are uh, what we have done uh, in the very beginning uh, that before introducing these nudges we did a survey uh, about the existing behavior as to what do uh, students perceive what do they think about uh, the sustainable environment or the green environment and how, how they feel about it and what they want to do actually. So, uh, you know, we uh, floated a Google form and we checked up with the students and, uh, you know, then we got a response uh, from about 263 students as to what are their perceptions about their uh, behavior. And we, we recorded uh, uh, these, uh, you know, perceptions. So uh, now we are in the third stage um, of this campaign. As you can see, this is the third step of, of the online campaign. And this is basically an awareness uh, campaign which started in April 2021 onwards. So uh, we, uh, we believe that, uh, you know, internally, I mean, at an internal level, if at the college level, uh, we can publicize, we can make students aware as to what are the green nudges, how can uh, they alter their behavior, and, uh, you know, they can contribute towards uh, sustainable environment. I think that would be great. So we have a college website. We uh, put it there. Then we do have a college mobile application uh, in which we circulate all important messages and things like that. And then uh, let me just tell you that there are 50, uh, 5050 college uh, WhatsApp groups on which, uh, you know, we are already um, uh, promoting the green nudges. So on the external level, if you can see that our posts are regularly been going on the Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. So now uh, this is again uh, the online campaign and what an uh, I mean, online campaign has started. 
So basically, as I told you, that there are four teams. Uh, as you can see, water, energy, reduced waste, mobility, and food. So all the four teams were told uh, as to what should be the you know the various innovative ways in which you can uh, create some kind of an awareness among students and people at large. So there was a lot of brainstorming. We had a lot of uh, meetings, and in the meeting, they decided that uh, actually uh, we'll uh, introduce these nudges one by one, and uh, we'll go with an option of did you know? Okay. So each and every team, each and every team was uh, asked to uh, come up with did you know? And uh, they did, uh, made really. Uh, I I can hear some humming, please. So uh, they made some did you knows, and we uh, we are uh, you know uh, circulating these did you knows on various social media handles. And then uh, the second team, uh, you know, they came up with some kind of posters on reducing waste. And again, the did you knows now did you knows is a very effective way of letting know people as to you know what uh, what is the psychology, what what goes behind, and how you can really contribute. So uh, these are some of the things that uh, you know the our students have done. So they have taken a lot of pain, uh, a lot of commitment to design these posters and posting it on, uh, uh, you know, various uh, platforms. So this is again the mobility, as you can see. And uh, then we have uh, another, um, the last nudge that is of the food. So how we can, uh, why we should, uh, you know, buy organic food. So you know, these are some of the posters, uh, and then we were uh, trying to make others aware. And uh, uh, lastly, if I say that, um, uh, what is my future plan? So in my future plan, I want to begin with some series of webinars uh, in June 2021. I, I think we were thinking that pandemic is going to get better, is going to go over, but it doesn't seem uh, happening like that. Uh, but then uh, we have no option but to go with an online um, uh, um, side of it. So we'll do, we'll be doing we'll be conducting uh, you know series of webinars on and uh, it is again the students will be organizing it. So students already know that uh, you know there are some YouTuber influencers and then all all these people you know who can influence who can crowd the students. So students are likely to invite all those people and obviously I'll be sending invitations to you guys. So all of you can uh, join us in these webinars. So the next step would be doing an online competition with the students, and uh, then uh, once you know the campuses are open, uh, then we can introduce these nudges in the campus. And uh, lastly, I think the last step is that uh, we'll be measuring the change in behavior because I've already have you know the initial pilot survey that I did with two sixty two students. So now I have my uh, database ready, and now I really want to measure as to what is the change in their behavior. How is that that what is the positive change? And this is what I'm going to uh, measure as a matter of the last step. So I think, uh, yeah, that's that's all from my side. Thank you so much. And uh, I think I'm open to any questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Kawal, for sharing your systemic way of um, engaging your campus community and taking advantage of digital technologies. I'm sure there'll be other universities who would want to use that tool too. Um, now, how can you work hand in hand with young people on site? Dr. Mugo uh, Moare is an environment forester with over 35 years experience uh, blending forestry practice and training of young men and women. Currently, he is a senior lecturer in the Department of Natural Resources at Karatina University in Kenya. He's also the chair of the Green University Committee, uh, where he leads a team that uh, focuses on greening the university system, processes, operations, and lifestyles through training, research, innovation, and community outreach. Amugo, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Marie. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, to come and uh, make this uh, presentation in this webinar. Uh, I'll be uh, talking, uh, sharing our experience, the experience of Karatina University in uh, engaging uh, primary school peoples and also university students in environmental conservation. These are uh, projects that we had been doing earlier before we got engaged in the nudges, and uh, currently we have engaged our students, but it's not part of this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. So it's entitled 
environmental clubs and green innovations and strategies for sustainable environmental conservation. Um, yes, and the, what is the challenge? Why are we concerned? Because environmental degradation uh, is there all, all over the world, and particularly in Africa, uh, where there is poverty is more pronounced. And the, even globally, between 2015 and 2020, the rate of deforestation was estimated at 10 million hectares per year. And the, in Kenya, as an example, uh, between 2010 and 2020, we lost about uh, 17,000 uh, uh, hectares of natural forest. And this is uh, a great loss. Uh, so we need to be concerned. Uh, one, uh, one uh, Professor Wangari Madai once said that nature is very generous, and it is true, but very unforgiving. You destroy it, it will also destroy you. So we must have a solution. And the solution, Kalatida University has come up with two approaches. One of it is that uh, we establish environmental clubs in primary schools, and in these primary schools, uh, um, uh, we, 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 we mentor students, we mentor the pupils. Then we also uh, uh, start, uh, started a green innovation competition for the university uh, students. And the, uh, why did we do it? We did it because uh, we want to inculcate a green culture uh, in our pupils. Uh, we want them to uh, carry the nudge, yes, of doing uh, environmental conservation work. Uh, and also restore and promote sustainable environmental conservation. Uh, specifically, uh, we aimed at creating awareness and developing a culture and also increasing forest cover. Uh, what was our foundation? Conviction. We are, we are con uh, persuaded that uh, you train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I think that is a quote from the Bible. Uh, we again did our work, and this, this uh, I'll be sharing with you some of the achievements. One, we were able to establish 64 environmental clubs in the primary schools in Nyeri County, and uh, this became part of the extracurricular activities for the uh, school. And also, pupils became interested, and they were having monthly, monthly meetings. Uh, we also trained the patrons so that they could be able to train the pupils, and we we trained them both in the environmental and climate change and mitigation uh, areas, and also things to do with the nursery operations. Many of the patrons were very active. Uh, and the, uh, in every school, uh, we established a nursery. So we established a total of 64 nurseries in the, in the 64 primary schools. And we used those nurseries to train the pupils on how to manage the nursery. And the photo here is illustrating that. Uh, the pupils were also involved on their own in terms of uh, uh, doing the nursery work and doing the wood rot work, and they learned by, by doing. And this connected the environment with their livelihoods. Uh, we also established uh, wood rots in about 60% of the, of the 64 schools, and the survival rate of the trees we planted in the wood rots was good at 55%. Uh, and this contributed both to the increase in the tree cover and the mitigation of climate change. Uh, again, I, I talked of the green innovation we started, and the design is that it is done annually. We did it in 20, 2019. That was our first one. And here, students submitted the innovative pro project, project proposals. Uh, and some of them submitted as groups, others submitted as, uh, as individuals. We had the adjudicators who uh, uh, looked at the project. And the, in this photo, we can see one of the group uh, making their presentation uh, and the adjudicators reason to them. Uh, yes, each of the participants, even uh, those who are not, uh, uh, yeah, th those who presented were given with
uh, given with the uh, were issued with certificates of participation. The winners of letters we idealized solid it appears there is a system. Okay. Sorry for for that. Mari, you can hear me. Yes, uh, we're running out of uh, time a little bit, so if you could speed up a little bit, if you don't mind. You can hear me? Yes, yes. This is great. Um, this this is uh, where we wanted to hear um, Green Nudge's okay. work here. Can you hear us? Uh, sorry. It, uh, we, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, uh, so uh, this was done. And the the outcome, uh, just finishing, uh, the outcome is that uh, uh, we awarded those, uh, uh, and said this, and this triggered in interest. Um, uh, yes. Uh, so in addition to that, Uh, this and this is an indication in this photo. Uh, we are we are partnering in it uh, in the tree planting, uh, and we learned a few lessons. The lessons learned: one, we learned that uh, a child is a very good ambassador for environmental conservation, and we also learned that uh, uh, mature trees would provide the needs, uh, immediate needs for the family, and uh, that would save the forest. Again, we also learned that if we expose the students, uh, they can be very innovative and they can provide uh, students for uh, and uh, to solve our environmental uh, problems. And with that, I say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and for sharing a, a strategic approach to engage young people and, and your green innovation competition week was also uh, one featured in our in the little book of green nudges uh, publication so congratulations on your wonderful work now i would Thank like you. to um take uh, questions from um the audience i see a lot of questions being already answered uh, in the chat box uh, if you like to um either share um, your experience or, or questions to the speakers, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and jump in. There was one participant at the beginning who, um, who raised the hand, but um, I think the hand is down now. Um, assuming the question's been already answered. All right then, um, Eric, it seems like you had 10 more minutes to share more about that too in the end. Uh, sorry to rush you. Um, well, um, the summary of this um, um, webinar will be shared with you um, with the permission from the speakers uh, presentation will be available as well. The video recording will be available on YouTube, uh, which I quickly shared a link uh, here. Um, if you missed the last um, webinar, it's also available there and um, within which you will also find a, a um, video clip of um, a CNN program uh, in which um, where our project is featured. Um, so next one is in June and it's going to be about um, material consumption and recycling uh, where, you know, a lot of universities are currently taking actions as far as I can see in our database. So um, once again, uh, please contact us um, if you'd like to present in the upcoming webinars. We still have um, energy and water use and travel, tra uh, travel as well. Um, Sam, would you like to come in? I see your hands up. <clears throat> yeah, just to say thank you for the presentations. I, I really enjoyed listening to them. Um, so it's always nice to have representatives from India and from Kenya, where uh, UNAP does uh, a fair bit of work. Um, I just wanted to say on, on the, the Book of Green Nudges, um, 
The feedback that you can give us about what works, what doesn't work is really helpful. So just letting us know um, when does a default really kind of lead to a high take up, how incentives are making a difference, and just also the, the mechanics of putting these in place in institutions so we can understand um, how <coughs> complex uh, the application is. So I think we might want to do a guidance note that would be built off the feedback about how the nudges work. So feel free to keep feeding in information to Marion and, and Dorothea uh, so we can learn. Uh, the second thing I'd just like to say is just, um, it feels like student engagement um, is really important because they can be real champions uh, to support the rollout of nudges on this. So in, including student associations and unions in the deployment. Um, from what Mario said to me, sounds like it's a really good thing to do, and I'm sure you're doing that already, but I just wanted to mention that. <clears throat> and then at, at UNEP, what we're looking to do is to try and get a synopsis of the difference that the Book of Green Nudges has made over the course of 2021, appreciating that it's been a very COVID-affected academic um, period. So rolling these out on campus, I think, would have a lot of constraints. But we're keen to take the learning out to both education ministries and to other partners as well to have an evidence base about what difference they made. So I think these are really interesting discussions and keep feeding back to us. Um, I just want to mention two last things. Um, one is that we are thinking about another initiative around nature positive universities. And um, we've been presented with a fascinating framework from the University of Oxford about what difference universities can make given their footprint around um, kind of restoring landscapes, uh, but also getting people to think differently about diet, um, particularly in North America and Northern Europe, where it's often uh, meat protein based. So there's an initiative that I think might be good to bring to this group for further discussion and dialogue, maybe a bit later in the year. So maybe July, August, once we've kind of firmed that up. Um, and the final thing I'd say is we've also done a, a new uh, product called a, a normative framework for what makes a, a sustainable university. And then we'll be launching that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, sometime in June or July. And what we've started to do is we're working to create new green university networks in Africa and in India uh, and doing a lot of work to give people some foundational approaches so that when universities are collaborating in different countries, they can see how they can have like a template that is best practice from all over the world from what different entities have done. And so I think, again, this is a nudge group where we're learning from each other and bringing different evidence into this discussion. But I think there's other initiatives that UNEP is undertaking that we would love to use this group as a focus group for, for feedback. So uh, apologies for abusing the floor, Mari, to talk about things relevant but different. Uh, but I, I, I've really enjoyed this discussion. Uh, congrats for all the work that you're doing keep us informed. We're not like this kind of big bureaucracy where you write to us and we ignore it. Uh, we're keen to hear from you and kind of learn and improve. And so um, congrats for everything you've done and uh, look forward to the next discussion. Thank you so much, Sam. And uh, um, everyone, his, his, um, what he said is really important for us as well. Um, if we could hear from your um, uh, um, experience and feedback and what works and what doesn't like, and it's really, really uh, important for us to improve um, and take take this project further. So today we heard uh, from Garage about an of action. It's something really, you know, no matter what the scale is, it's regional, national, global, or on your campus actually, it's something that you can do to start tomorrow. Um, so think about that too. And Eric shared um, uh, counter sin. Um, it's it's quite an innovative way of engaging um, uh, youth mobilization with businesses. And we have amazing uh, speakers from India and Kenya uh, um, who's both shown a different uh, ways uh, and creative ways um, uh, to mobilize young people and engage them and how we could actually support them. So thank you once again and uh, to all speakers and I'm looking forward to um, seeing you uh, next month. Thank you so much and take care. Bye now. Thanks. Bye. Thank you all. Bye and thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.